hello there and welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be doing a get ready with me i'm going to be busting out some of my new favorite makeup products so it will give me an opportunity to show you them today but we're also going to be trying out an eyeshadow palette by Natasha Denona so I've never tried anything by Natasha Denona before obviously like if you're into makeup everyone and their sister and then their next door neighbour and their manager of the HR department at their work seems to idolise and love Natasha Denona eyeshadow so I kind of gave in I bought one of her mini palettes this palette is called the mini retro eyeshadow palette it cost me I think it was about £25 for a £5 eyeshadow palette the shades really really appealed to me it looks very dusky kind of grey just very cool toned so I'm really really excited to try this today before we get to that I'm just gonna do a little bit like a just a casual get ready with me show you some of my current favourite products so let's jump in okay so to begin well I already kind of uh, I jumped the gun so I've already primed my face and I used my new favourite makeup primer which is by first aid beauty it's the coconut skin smoothie priming moisturizer this feels really comfortable on the face like, really really hydrating if you've watched really any of my is it has videos recently this glow is most likely so the base that I've this been wearing. has become my new kind of everyday moisturizer i feel like if you you wear it on days where you're not going to be wearing makeup it just adds a whole kind of healthy glow to your skin because it is a primer it also works really really well as a base so i already applied this this morning but you can definitely see the beautiful glow i think these cost about £21 and I would really recommend it. I've been wanting to try it for ages and the one thing that kind of put me off was that it's a coconut smoothie primer and I hate anything coconut. I don't like the smell, I don't like the taste but there's nothing about that that smells or I was gonna say or tastes like not that I go around tasting my primers but yeah there's no no coconut in it. There probably is but I don't know there is, apart from it's in the title, but other than that, I can't smell them. And I definitely can't taste them, you'll be glad to know. Okay, so next for my founded liation, we're gonna be using this one, it's by L'Oreal, and it's the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. So I'm a huge fan of L'Oreal foundations in general. This was one of their newer releases, although I'm not sure if it was brand new, I think maybe they kind of reformulated a bit. It's a medium to full coverage, but it doesn't look heavy. It really, really complements my 37 year old skin. It doesn't emphasize, texture, pores, it just makes my skin look really flawless and healthy. I would say that this is a natural finish. It's not dewy and it's not matte. It's kind of like a satin. It's got a bit of life to it. So I have dry skin and this is super comfortable on my skin. It definitely doesn't dry it out. It just feels really, really comfortable. It lasts really, really, really well. It holds up against me touching my face, against me getting maybe a little bit oily it just it looks as good seven hours in as it looks when you first apply it so i have this in the shade natural rose which i actually don't think is my perfect shade it's definitely quite pink i would say and i just don't think i've got my perfect shade match so next time i'm probably going to go a little bit lighter and maybe a little bit cooler so anyway i really really love this foundation and i would definitely recommend particularly if you've got dry more mature skin and you don't want a super heavy full looking coverage but you still want a good amount of coverage Okay, so next for contour, I'm going to be using the Milk Bronzing Stick. This is in the shade Baked. I really have come to enjoy this. I definitely do feel like cream contours are easier to use. And I know that's not the case for everyone, but for me, I just find that they're kind of easier to blend out and they look a little bit more natural than powder products. So... I like to just find where my natural hollow of the cheek is and then I just I just apply with a brush and I like to make sure that I go up a little bit higher towards 
my hairline because that's where we really want most of most of the shape to be. Also, I do think that it's really important to experiment with your own face. Don't just go off what you see everyone else doing because I did that for the longest time. I would just like see other people just like putting it here, putting it there, putting it on the chin, on their forehead, on the sides of their nose. And I realised that actually all of our faces are different. What works for some people is not going to work for everyone. So, you know, just experiment. Find what works for you. I do like to just pop a little bit of the contour there just to try and snatch in my chin a little bit because I feel like my chin could always, always benefit from a bit of snatching, you know? Oh, by the way, so I've started to watch the second season of UK Drag Race and it, oh my gosh, like they've definitely given much more budget to the second season. Like every single one of the UK drag queens in that season are just amazing. I, I find it hard to even pick who my favourite is because they're all just so good. The first season was just a little bit like, it was shady how little budget the poor drag queens were given. This cream contour stick just blends out so easily. And yeah, I just find it is like really, really forgiving if you're not that good at doing contour, which I am definitely not. The reason why I've just popped a little bit of the contour under my chin is just to create a little bit of a natural shadow to give my bottom lip a little bit more fullness. Okay, so a new thing that I've recently started doing to create a bit more definition to my contour is to apply some concealer in a light shade underneath, like, or where... I would like the natural kind of shadow to appear on my cheeks just to make the contour that I've done stand out a bit more. This is definitely not going to be for everyone and it's not something that I do every single time I apply my makeup but particularly when I'm filming it's something that I've really enjoyed doing and I have really seen the difference as I've been watching my videos back. So I use the Instant Age erase rewind i don't know the name but it's this one uh the iconic concealer by maybelline and this is in the shade ivory and i just i just go like that like there's really not that much to it really other than i just go like that that's it and then i do pop a little bit just on my chin upper lip nose and the old forehead. Also, I did use to contour around the perimeter of my forehead, but then I realised that it just had no impact whatsoever. It made no freaking difference, so I just fecked that one right off. So I blend out this concealer using my sponge and just try and be very, very careful because I want that line to kind of remain in place. And I also like to take the concealer all the way down to my jaw. I just think that this just creates a little bit more definition to the face. And honestly, like I'm not going to be doing this when I'm rushing in the morning to get the boys ready, get myself ready uh, before I go out to work. Like this is definitely, it's not realistic to think that this is is a step that I'm going to be taking every time I apply my makeup. It's just a little bit of a OTT extra step that I do like to do when I am going to be filming. By the way, I love this concealer. Out of all of the concealers I've ever tried, this Maybelline Rewind Erase, it's the best concealer in my opinion and it's super affordable. Okay, so can you see we've got a real, real definition situation going on. So next, I'm going to get some loose pat by, I know I look crazy, I know. You're sat there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm wearing it looks insane. I know, but don't worry, it will all work. So next, I'm going to take my loose translucent, I don't even know, it's the loose powder from Laura Mercier, and I'm going to use it just to bake the area with the concealer. I know, this is all very extra, isn't it, guys? I know, very extra, very unnecessary, but I enjoy it, you know, I do. 
and I'm just gonna pop that under there. I know it's so extra though, guys, like so extra. Who is she? You know what? I don't know what all the fuss is about with this Laura Mercier powder. I I just don't get it. I do not get it. I mean, I'm not a huge, huge fan of loose powders, but I just don't see how this is any different from every other loose powder because it essentially it's a powder. There mustn't be that many ingredients in this. But I mean, I got sold on this about 10 years ago. Um, and luckily it's lasted me for ages, so that's great. Okay, so whilst we are baking, I am going to go in with my blush. And my current favorite blush is, well, it's not actually my current favorite, but it's my newest blush. And it's the Iconic Orgasm Blush by NARS. I heard so much about this when I first, started watching beauty videos on YouTube, everybody and their sister, their neighbour, the person that served them in Wagamama's, like this was everybody's favourite blush. And I somehow managed to resist the peer pressure to buy it. But then I watched a video the other week and there was a girl, she created the most beautiful, a glowy, peachy makeup look and she used orgasm and she sold me, like she sold me. I'd say it's kind of like a coral, corally kind of pink and then it's got this most beautiful kind of gold shift. Can you see that? Like it's a blush but it's definitely not matte. It's got a huge amount of glow to it which I just think it just makes your face look so healthy and glowy. And it actually does look like you probably just had an orgasm as well. So that's, that's very good. Also, I know I've said this in probably every single video recently, but I really have been enjoying applying my blush further back and higher up on my cheekbones. I used to do like the smile technique and I would just focus it on the apples of my cheeks, but I actually think it creates a lot more shape to put it a bit further back. Uh, so I've really been enjoying doing that. And I've also been hamming it up. I've just been popping loads on recently living my very best blush life okay so i'm going to take off my bake before it gets too late and i just completely forget so i'm just going to use circular buffing motions just to kind of remove it okay so there we go and can you see we've just got that definition which admittedly looks a little bit shit over on this side Maybe if I just kind of blend a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so next we're gonna do the eyebrows. And recently I've been using the ABH Brow Promenade in the shade Blonde. I used to use the shade Taupe because ABH described the shade Taupe as being ideal for people who had ashy, platinum, kind of silver hair. But I've actually found that blonde is, in my opinion, a much better fit for ashier, kind of more cooler toned blonde hair because it's lighter, whereas taupe, I just find that it's good if you want really stark, uh, kind of noticeable, dramatic brows. But for me recently, I've been enjoying just a little bit more of a subtle brow. So I've really been enjoying the blonde shade. So I apply that on the ends of my brows just to create that real kind of, you know, finesse tip. But then on the inner bit of my brows, I like to use the Gimme Brow by Benefit. Again, I've started using this in shade one. Carmen's just appeared at her window, but she's in a towel. She's coming in a towel today, guys. So I actually feel for the first time ever, who's the more awkward one today? And I don't think it's me sat here filming. No, I think it's Carmen. She has a towel wrapped around her head and she has a towel on. So surely she must now think, oh my gosh, I'm in a towel. I cannot be in my window right now. She's still there. She's there. She's proud. She said, no, I am watching the show in my towel. 
Oh, she's sent off. Great. Okay. So with the Gimme Brow, I've been using shade number one, uh, which is the lightest shade. And uh, I've really been enjoying it. But again, if you like a more intense, dramatic statement brow, then I think shade number one will probably be too light. <laughs> Okay, so next I'm just going to pop my favourite highlighter on. This is by Ofra and it's a Rodeo Drive. And I am just going to spray a little bit of Fix Plus on. So I've definitely been enjoying using a smaller brush in which to apply my highlighter. I just think it's, I don't know, it gives you a nicer look without going overboard and I know I never thought I would see the day where I would be behaving as if you know going overboard on, on a highlighter was bad but I just think if you're going with a smaller brush you know you can get that highlighter exactly where you want it to go and it just looks that little bit more special oh, i've loved this highlighter for a long time now i would describe it as being kind of like a very light gold uh, in the past i've described it as being a, a champagne but i actually don't really think that's accurate so yeah i would say definitely more of a light gold and I would say this is pretty universal. I think many, many, many different skin tones would just be glowing to the gods with this highlighter. Hmm. Okay, so we've come to the moment of truth. We're finally going to be trying out the mini retro eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona. I'm sure that you have seen these before. She released four or five different palettes. It's, it's tiny, like it's so small. But oh my gosh, the actual pans themselves. They're so tiny, oh my gosh. So this is actually the first time I'm looking at it because I've had this for about two months now and I always knew I wanted to do like a review of it. So I've just kept it in the box. This is the first time I'm actually seeing it and those pans are minuscule. Look at that. See, I thought when I paid £25 from Natasha Denona palette that there must be there must be a curveball they're going to throw in. And the curveball was the size of these pans. I think the shades look absolutely gorgina. So it looks like we've got three metallics and then we've got two mattes in the middle. I absolutely love these shades. I'm hoping that they're going to be great. I'm sure they will, but I don't know. Okay, so before we begin, I'm just going to do some swatches. Oh, so they feel very, very soft. I have picked up the three metallics. It does appear that the pink one is slightly different to the other two. The other two definitely look like they're, they've been infused with glitter. They seem slightly kind of looser, maybe a little bit chunkier. I'll just swatch. Oh, yes. That reminds me a lot of orgasm actually by you know the blush i used <gasps> this is gorgeous oh my gosh like i'm a huge huge fan of cool tones <gasps> oh that one's gorgeous that one's gorgeous that one's gorgeous i mean if i'm gonna be honest though i've definitely got these two shades in a few other palettes so although they're very soft very creamy and they do look really beautiful i have kind of seen them before again and again uh, whereas this kind of taupey silver shade is just taking my breath away it's absolutely stunning and I don't think I've got anything quite like that I've got silver shades and I've got taupey shades but this is kind of a hybrid silver taupe and I think it's so gorgeous okay so I will swatch the two matte oh the mattes feel like cream they're so soft. I will swatch that one there. Very creamy, beautiful shade. And then that one. 
Okay, standard. Oh, okay. All in all, like, yeah, I'm very excited to try this palette. They all felt so beautiful and they definitely look stunning. Okay, so to begin the look today, I'm going to go in with this light shade. It's like a very light pink. I'm actually going to use a really big fluffy brush because I want to blend that all the way from my crease right the way up to my brow. So I just kind of tapped the shadow on and now using small circular motions, I am just kind of blending it all out. For such a light shade, I think it's got good pigment. You can definitely see it there, which is nice. And I just feel like this is going to be a really, really beautiful initial kind of, you know, transition shade to to lay everything on top of. Certainly blending out beautifully. Mm, nice. Guys, let me know in the comments downstairs, have you tried any Natasha Denona? And what were your thoughts? Do you feel like she's worth the hype? And if so, what's your favorite palette by her? I mean, I know that some of her palettes are in the region of like, well, over a hundred pounds, which, whoo, you know, because I gave in and I tried Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette very swiftly followed up by uh, another Pat McGrath palette because I must say I, I was definitely super impressed with the quality. You can see why the brands have got the reputation that they've got, but I still don't necessarily think that... Uh, and I should have probably should be over a hundred pounds because that just seems outrageous to me it really does and obviously like value is so subjective it's the value of anything is as much as what people would be willing to pay so I suppose if Pat McGrath can and Natasha Denona if they can sell eyeshadow palettes for you know a hundred plus pounds and people are buying them then all power to Pat McGrath and Natasha Denoni, you know what I mean? Oh, do you know what? I'm really loving this shade. It just blends out effortlessly. It actually behaves more like a cream. Uh, I would definitely say that if you're, if you're like new to makeup or if you don't feel like you're that good at blending, then I definitely think like if you did spend a bit more money, you would like you definitely would have a, an easier time because I feel like this looks so good. Whereas maybe with some more affordable eyeshadow, I would have to like spend longer blending to get anywhere near the same result. Although saying that, I mean I've got some amazing affordable makeup palettes. For example, the Four C palette from you can be is stunning like stunning and those shadows blend out so easily and that's only like it only cost me like seven pounds so winning okay so i'm really really loving loving la 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 la, la loving this look so next i am a little bit confused actually because i'm not quite sure where this shade kind of fits in with everything else because uh, oh, it looks to be like a khaki green, but then if you actually look a bit closer, it looks like more of a taupe. So maybe I'll just pop this in my crease and I might just like, you know, kind of focus it in my outer vein, just like blend it out a little bit. I think I'm also going to pop this on my waterline as well. And it'd be interesting to see what colour actually comes out. Will she be khaki green? Will she be taupe? I hope she's taupe but she'll probably be khaki green and then I'll be in a sea of confusion. Okay, so this actually doesn't look taupe, nor does it look khaki green. It's definitely more of like a grey, I would say. It's really beautiful. I'm really, really loving it. It's again, blending out beautifully, but there's a lot of kickback when you pop your brush into the pan. So it is quite a loose shadow. Oh, I mean, it's blending out so beautifully. It's so beautifully. And it's just like the right amount of pigmented. But the final look when you've actually blended it out doesn't look reminiscent of what it actually looks like in the pan, which is a little bit bizarre. But okay, by the way, can you see what I mean by the fact that when I said there's a lot of kickback? 
you can see all of the powder there just kind of sat on top i'm just going to blend a little bit more under the eye because i want it to have this kind of smoked out look i really like this shade though really nice and it is blending out so beautifully oh my gosh i've gone in with way too much though so you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back in with the light pink shade which is probably more of like a salmon shade actually and i'm just going to use this just to kind of blend out the edges just to soften it up a little bit Okay, so next we're going to pop that same shade up in the crease. Mm, okay, really, really nice. It's re again, really, really easy to, to work with. And I really like the shade. I think that this could potentially be a really good, like, bridal palette. I really like it. Like, it's very easy to work with. What I am noticing is my right eye is feeling a bit watery and that might be nothing to do with this palette but this eye feels very watery and i suspect it may be because these shadows are quite powdery i think i may have got a little bit of powder in my my eye how rude but oh my gosh it looks really 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 beautiful very nice indeed Okay, so I'm going to switch to a fluffier brush just to help to blend everything out. Okay, so there we go. I really, really, really love that. And again, these shadows are just an absolute dream to work with. Do I think that they're head and shoulders better than the more affordable shadows that I use that I really love? No, really. I mean, they're definitely very creamy, very, very easy, just effortless to, to work with, but I don't think they're miles away, honestly. Okay, so next we're going to go in with a shimmer, and I'm really just stuck because I don't know whether to go in with the taupey kind of silver or whether I want to go in with the champagne. I mean, honestly, I, like this is a very cohesive kind of palette because any one of the three metallics would definitely work. Oh, it's really tough. I mean, I think I'm going to go in with the taupey silver because that's the one I'm most excited about. I don't necessarily think it's the one that will complement the, the look the most, but I've got a feeling that that's the one that you probably want to see the most and I'm definitely most intrigued about. So we're going to just say goodbye to matchy matchy eye looks today and we're going to say hello to trying out the shades that we're most interested in so yeah oh it's beautiful guys oh my gosh yes yes and also it just feels very um almost almost cream like very kind of a lightweight it's got no texture to it doesn't feel dry doesn't feel chunky, doesn't feel powdery, it just feels very smooth. A lot of the time when I'm using the metallics, I will always go in with a wet brush or a wet finger just so that I can get the most out of the metallic. But I don't even feel like I would need to with this because it just looks so good. It looks so good good and i think there are little glitters in there that are just they're just making it look like it's sparkling ah we love we love we love oh my gosh this is so gorgeous yeah i must say that i'm really really pleased that i got this palette i think that 25 pounds is actually a good price for five extremely beautiful I'm very easy to work with eyeshadows. Although I'm not going to be running out and spending over £100 on any other Natasha Denona palettes, I'm really, really pleased that I got to try this one. And yeah, I think £25 is a fair price. And I would recommend, you know, if you've been intrigued on Natasha Denona, I would recommend, like, why not treat yourself? I don't think you'd regret it. Okay, so there we go. I didn't need to use a wet brush, wet finger, wet anything to create this. It just did it all by itself. I am so happy with this palette. Like, and I'm so pleased that I actually 
decided to treat myself and I would definitely recommend you treat yourself too because I just don't see how you could ever be disappointed. If you're a fan of cool tones, which I know a lot of you are, this is this is the palette with your name on it. Well, it's not. It's got Natasha's name on it, but it's got your name on it too. Okay, so next I'm going to be applying my favourite mascara in the whole world, the Lash Princess by Essence. A lot of people ask me about this and I always say, make sure it's the one in the mint green and black tube because they do have a couple of other ones and I've tried both and in my opinion, neither one was anything special. But this one is gorgina. It gives real definition, volume and length. Okay, so next I'm going to go in with a, oh, this is not the right thing. That's a lip liner. So we're going to go in with a Barry M eyeliner. This is just in the shade black, just to add a little bit more definition. And then I'm going to create some faux freckles. Okay, so there we go. I just think it makes so much difference when you add black to the waterline, especially if you're wearing like cool tones, it just makes your eyes pop so much more. Okay, so now we've done that, I'm going to add some faux freckles. So my current favourite way to do this is by using a liquid lipstick. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is what? Stick with me a minute, honestly, it's the best way to create faux freckles. So I use a liquid lipstick in a kind of nude, like almost flesh coloured tone. And then I use a tiny little like bit, bit. I use the end tip of one of my makeup brushes. And I use that to just pop on the liquid lipstick. And then I just use my fingers to tap it all out. It sounds crazy, but honestly, it's the best way to create faux freckles and they just look so natural. They're all kind of different shapes, sizes. They're everywhere. It just, to me, it just creates the most natural looking faux freckles. Like you could tell they're faux, but they look kind of natural. It's kind of like, are they real or are they not? We just don't know. So I take the liquid lipstick onto my hand. This is by Makeup Revolution. It's in the shade Hustle. I know I said flesh tone colour. This is actually more of a nudey brown shade, but it does seem to work out well for me. So taking the tip of one of my makeup brushes, I just kind of take a small amount and then I just like randomly create little spots. And then I take my finger and I use my finger just to tap them out. Can you see how it just creates this really, I think, natural look? It's super easy to do. And quick. And does not take any skill whatsoever. I'm just going to pop some of my mascara onto my lower lashes because I wanted to wait for the top lashes to dry before I attempted to put mascara on the lower lashes. I have a love-hate relationship with mascara on my lower lashes. I love the look. I think it just like finishes off a look but I just always end up looking like a panda because I just find no matter what mascara I use, even if it claims not to smudge, I, I've never met a mascara that has not smudged out on my lower lashes. Like, I've never met one. Okay, so there we go. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay, so to finish off the look today, I'm going to be using a new liquid lipstick fave. So this was bought for me by my dad's wife. She very kindly uh, picked this out for my birthday. It's by Mel Cosmetics and it's in the shade Ladylike and it's the most beautiful kind of it's like a pinky shade. And I am going to be lining my lips today with a NYX liner in the shade Sugar Glass. I never knew it was called Sugar Glass before because like, I can't talk and apply lip liner, I just can't. But because the liquid lipstick is very pink, I just want to add a little bit more like definition. Okay, so this is the final look. 
I really, really, really love this uh, liquid lipstick shade. I think if you're a fan of pinks, I think you would love this shade. The uh, liquid lipstick, I would say, isn't the most comfortable liquid lipstick in the world, but I just, I find generally liquid lipsticks are just not that comfortable. It does definitely feel a little bit dry on your lips, but it definitely looks good. It looks opaque. It's not streaky or anything. So I do definitely recommend it. I really, really hope that you've enjoyed this Get Ready With Me today. I've had so much fun telling you about some of my new favourite products. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing them. And oh my gosh, I am so, so happy with the Natasha Denona palette. I was in two minds about it and I knew that I was either probably going to really love it or I was going to be disappointed because when there's so much hype and expectation kind of surrounding a brand and all you've really heard have been really really good things there's I don't know you've just you build up a lot of expectations so I think it could only go one of two ways but I'm really pleased to say that I was really happy with it and I do think that you know, there's probably not going to come a day anytime soon where I'm going to be spending a lot of money on one of her larger palettes. But I think that these £5, £25 eyeshadow palettes, I do think that they're a really good option for uh, people that maybe just haven't tried Natasha Denona yet and they just want to dip their makeup junky toe in and see what all the fuss is about. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching the video today and just spending a bit of time with me. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of the day. Bye!